Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve. So here's a bit of a schematic that I've rustled up. So let's just label some key structures. So I'm just going to split the brainstem up here. So this structure would be our cerebellum. Up here we're going to have our midbrain. Here we are going to have our pons and here we have our medulla oblongata. This structure here is supposed to represent the foramen magnum, which is the point at which the brainstem is going to exit the skull. And superior to the foramen magnum is the medulla oblongata, as I've said, but below the foramen magnum is when we start calling the brainstem the spinal cord. Okay, let's just clear the drawing. Now what I've tried to do is I've tried to colour code things, so let's draw a little key. So we're going to say anything in blue is going to be talking about sensory information and anything in green is going to be referring to motor. So you can see that we have three blue sensory nuclei in the brainstem and one green. And also that we have some blue nerves and a green nerve. And what these are representing are a sensory root of the trigeminal nerve and a motor root of the trigeminal nerve and you'll see that these both are leaving the pons. I also want to point out that the motor root is not as big as I've drawn it there but I've drawn it large so that you can can see a little bit more clearly. And then you can see that just going through the sensory root or continuing on from the sensory root we've got this thing here and this is our trigeminal ganglion trigeminal ganglion and this is quite easy to see in dissections because it's rather large and this trigeminal ganglion is held in or is is sort of bound by two layers of dura and this is called Meckel's cave Meckel's cave and this is in the middle cranial fossa and then you'll see that once we've got this ganglion we've then got some splitting We've got three divisions of sensory nerves. We have V1, this guy, V2, this guy, and V3, which will be this guy. And these three divisions have names. So this first division, V1, is ophthalmic branch. And I want to draw your attention to the spelling of ophthalmic. There's an H there. V2 is called the maxillary branch and V3 which is going to be distal to this structure here which we'll talk about in a minute is going to be our mandibular branch and hopefully that you'll remember that Scott did a video on looking at um, where the cranial nerves enter and exit the skull and these are what these things are trying to represent. These are supposed to represent our foramina. So we have three here. Well, actually, we have um, we have two foramina and one fissure. So this one, the ophthalmic branch, because it's a sensory branch, because it's in blue, this is going to enter the skull through the superior orbital fissure. Then as for our maxillary branch, which is V2, sensory again, it's going to come from the periphery to the brain stem, and this is going to enter the skull through the foramen rotundum. And then lastly we have our mandibular branch, which you can see here contains both motor information, so motor information is going to exit the skull through this um, foramen, and then you've got the blue sensory information which is entering the skull through this foramen, and this is the foramen ovale. What I want you to notice is that we have two separate branches. We have the motor branch, which is leaving the brain stem at this point here, and it's travelling through the foramen ovale with the mandibular branch and then it's distal to that that the motor branch will join V3 and it will continue as a mixed nerve. So this bit here where I've drawn it in red is going to be mixed. So this is going to carry both the information that is motor and sensory. So you might be thinking to yourself, well what's the point of this big ganglion? Well, the trigeminal ganglion is a little bit analogous to the dorsal root ganglion in the periphery. And this is where it's go you're going to be containing 
or within it is going to be the pseudo unipolar cell bodies. So if this was a sensory branch coming from V1, its cell bodies are going to be held in the trigeminal ganglion and then axons are going to project to um, these nuclei. So you'll rightly or you'll hopefully remember what a pseudo unipolar cell is. So a pseudo unipolar neuron has two axons. It has a central axon and it has a peripheral axon. So central and peripheral. And the cell body is here. There are no dendrites. So that's a, a sort of in contrast to other types of neurons. So no dendrites, only axons. And these um, pseudo unipolar cell bodies are going to be held within our trigeminal ganglion. Now before I start talking about these nuclei and, and what they do, we know that there's a huge sensory distribution. We know that there's V1, V2 and V3 and this is going to be collecting all the sensation from the face. So whereabouts does V1, V2 and V3 take sensory information from? Well, here we go. So I like to think that this looks like a profile view of Scott. Um, and what I want to draw your attention to is that everything in orange is going to relay sensory information via V1. Everything in blue is going to carry information, sensory information via V, sorry, via V2, so the maxillary branch, and the red bit here, um, all this information is going to travel via V3. So if you were to see a drawing like this without the um, V1, V2 and V3 on, hopefully you'd be able to know that V1 is the orange bit, V2 is the blue, and V3 is the red. So information is going to be coming from nerve endings in say V1, so if you imagine this is an axon, it's going to travel via the, via the um, ophthalmic branch and then we're going to have our pseudo unipolar um, cell body in our trigeminal ganglion which wouldn't be here anatomically but this is just to show the point and then it would go on um, via the um, ophthalmic branch till it reached the the trigeminal ganglion which would be here and then it would go along the sensory route so you can just see the the pathway but obviously that's that's not to scale or anatomically correct because the trigeminal ganglion would be somewhere over here um, but that's just to help you see what's going on so let's just continue the drawing so let's say this was our here this was the same neuron it's coming cell body in the trigeminal ganglion through the sensory route here and then information is going to synapse on some of these ganglion, sorry, some of these nuclei. What I want to point out is that the blue nuclei, the sensory nuclei, traverse pretty much the, a large proportion of the brainstem and even as far down into the spinal cord. And this is relevant because if you have a brainstem lesion, it's not inconceivable to have some kind of symptom that would relate to the, the function that the cranial nerve 5 um, conveys. So um, you don't really need to know too much about brainstem lesions, but if, if you were to do some extra reading, you might hear of all different, um, for example, there's something called lateral medullary syndrome. But, and again, because it's a brainstem lesion, you quite often see problems relating to the trigeminal nerve. This guy up here, we're not going to talk about because it's quite complicated and it's, it's not really relevant for what you're doing. But I just wanted to put it there to just to show you that there are nuclei related to the trigeminal nerve that do go up as high as the midbrain. So we're going to talk about these two. So this here is our chief sensory nucleus. And this here is our spinal nucleus 5. And then the three of these, including the green um, motor nucleus, are going to comprise our trigeminal motor complex. Sorry, what am I talking about? Our trigeminal nuclear complex. So our trigeminal nuclear complex, as I'm sure you've heard Scott talk about. So our chief sensory nucleus is going to be dealing with or is going to be receiving information about light touch and discriminative touch from the face via the distributions as set out by V1, V2 and V3. So imagining this was carrying information about 
light touch from V1 and it would be synapsing, let's just do it in red, synapsing here on this nucleus. Or we could have information that was coming um, to synapse on our spinal nucleus 5, which would be information relating to pain, temperature, crew touch and pressure. And this, this loops down, so this, I'm drawing it in red, maybe I should draw it in blue actually. So it's going to loop down like this. So the information, so these would be multiple different nerve fibres. And before it reaches spinal nucleus 5, it actually is carried in a tract. So these are going to be axons, and this tract here is going to be called spinal tract 5. So information is going to travel via spinal tract 5, which is analogous to Lasau's tract in the um, spinal cord. Then we're going to have the axon synapsing onto the spinal nucleus 5 and then what's going to happen, and this is also true for the sensory, um, chief sensory nucleus, is that you're going to have first um, order neurons synapsing on these two nuclei and then they're going to cross the midline, then they are going to travel up in the TTT, the trigeminothalamic tract, where they are then going to, so the second order neurons, so the second order neurons are going to be the ones that are going to travel up the TTT, so after synapsing on the um, nuclei, travel up in the TTT where they're going to synapse in the VPM of the thalamus and then they're going to, the third order neurons are then going to travel up um, to the cortex. And Scott has talked about that um, in the course before when he's talked about um, sensory information from the face. So that's just a little bit of a reminder. So now all that's left to talk about is this green guy here. And this is going to be our trigeminal motor nucleus. And as you can see, this is in the pons. And this is going to be, so lower motor neurons are going to travel via the motor route through the foramen of Ali and then on through the mixed nerve of the mandibular branch. So the mandibular branch is going to be the largest of the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve and it's carrying and it's the only one to carry motor information. V1 and V2 are blue so they are only sensory. And the motor nucleus is going to be involved, involved in providing um, motor innovation to the muscles of mastication primarily. There are also a couple of others which we'll talk about when we deal with the mandibular branch in more detail. But for now, the key thing is that it deals with the muscles of mastication which are going to be involved in eating and chewing and opening and closing the jaw. And the motor nucleus, as you can see, as I said before, is in the pons and is leaving via the motor route also from the pons. And that's really all there is to say in terms of introducing the trigeminal nerve. Later on we will talk about each of the individual branches. Scott's talked about V1, which you can find on the website, and I will talk about V2 and also V3. Well, I hope that helps, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.